Sam Betters here with 32 NFL previews in 32 days. We are on day number 22 and we continue to look at the NFC East. And today we deep dive in to the New York football giants. But first, as always, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to Grand Sam Betters. Don't miss any of our team previews in all of our season long NFL free picks. And go ahead and smash that like button because the NFL preseason week number two is almost finished. That means we only have one more round of preseason games until we get to the real NFL season. And that's the exciting part here in less than about three weeks. Now, before we get into the giant season preview, just a reminder, we're also giving away $1,000 here on Grandstand Betters. Yes, that's right. $1,000 is going to go to you, one of our subscribers, in our NFL contest this year at GrandstandBetters.com. The link is below in the description. All you have to do is click on it. The sign-up is absolutely free. And one of you, our subscribers, is going to be taking home $1,000 this NFL season. While you're over at GrandstandBetters.com, go ahead and become part of our family and start living that Grandstand life. But without further ado, let's dive into the New York Giants season but to do so, let's first take a look back at 2020. The Giants finished uh, last season with a 6-10 record and finished with a push on their preseason win total. If they had not lost Saquon Barkley in Week 2, which turned out to be a season-ending ankle injury, they probably most likely would have at least won one more game and hit that over in Joe Judge's first season as head coach. However, it cannot all be blamed on Barkley. QB Daniel Jones had an average season last year, and their wide receiver group was not the best. Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton showed a lot of promise throughout the season, but Jones just could not get them the ball uh, as consistently as he needed to. With Saquon back, uh, that's going to be much easier uh, on the offense for them as defenses are going to have to expect to be... Uh, uh, more downfield because Daniel Jones is going to pass with that threat of Barkley in the backfield. Now, the Giants' defense is also showing signs of improvement behind linebacker Victor Martinez and a good run defense. This team gave up the ninth least points in the league last season. The organization is slowly putting the pieces back together since their Super Bowl runs with Eli Manning, and this year definitely, definitely looks promising once again. If we get into their 2021 season outlook, let's look at a couple offseason moves first. The Giants needed more offensive weapons, and that's exactly what they got. To pair nicely with Evan Ingram, the Giants picked up Kyle Rudolph from the Minnesota Vikings. Now, most likely he's going to serve primarily as their blocking tight end, but when Ingram was out with an injury last year or taking a break, they really had nobody that they could rely on. Kyle Rudolph is going to take care of that problem. They also picked up two wide receivers, John Ross from the Bengals and Kenny Galladay from the Lions. These guys are going to mix really well with Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton. That's a very solid wide receiver core that teams are going to struggle consistently to guard if Jones can get them the ball. Now, the Giants were also able to add running back Devontae Booker from the Raiders. He's definitely going to serve as a nice backup with Barkley uh, since there is level con of concern that Barkley could re-aggravate his injury. Um, and to be honest, Booker's going to be a little more consistent than Wayne Gallman last year uh, who came in to fill in those shoes for Barkley. Now, all these additions they made to their offense were very good and added a lot of depth. It's really on if Daniel Jones can get things rolling and lead this offense. Defensively, the Giants had a well-rounded defense last year. They ranked in the top half of the league in passing, rush defense, and points per game. They added some depth to their line and edge rushers this offseason. But the key move that we do want to highlight here was signing Adoree Jackson from the Titans. Their secondary was the only thing holding them back last season. And we think this is going to be a good pickup here. They did a good job of keeping their key players, adding Jackson in this unit, and it's going to be a big jump even to become even more better as a defensive unit. They're going to be one of the most solid units in the league. If not already, they will develop that shortly. 
Now, looking at their draft picks, the Giants selected wide receiver Kadarius Toney out of Florida University. This guy is explosive. Very quick off the line. We expect uh, them to use him a lot in jet sweeps and play action, which is going to help mix up this offense and really keep defenses on their toes, as well as the opportunity as they'll never know when they're going to go to Saquon Barkley in the backfield. In the second round, the Giants selected linebacker Aziz Ajwari. I think that's close, out of Georgia University. We don't know if he's going to make the starting rotation in linebackers as the unit was very good last season. There's a lot of great guys on the team, but definitely expect him to make the 53-man roster this season. The rest of their picks will most likely probably be on the practice squad. Nothing really to highlight there, but we definitely wanted to go over those two guys as they were good first and second round pickups of the team, and they drafted very well in those first couple rounds. Now, if we get into the Giants' schedule, they have the 25th hardest schedule this season, and in their divisional games, it just seems like they always go 3-3. Three and three. In all honesty, it seems like every NFC East team splits every game. They play one really good game, the Giants do, and then they, the next time around, they lose a close game or get blown out by the same opponent. So we're going to stick with our gut here and have them just completely even in their divisional games. The rest of their NFC opponents are the NFC South, the Rams, and the Bears. We see them losing to the Rams and beating the Bears, going 2-2 two and two against the NFC North. However, I mean, they could go 3-1 and one in those games with maybe an upset against the Bucks or the Saints. So that gives them really a 6-6 six and six record heading into the last five games uh, that we haven't talked about with chances of just having to get two wins to hit the over there as their over is set at 7 this year. So these five chances that they'll have are matchups between the Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers, Raiders, and Dolphins. And uh, we have them beating Denver in Week 1 and also the Raiders in Week 9, but losing to the Chiefs and Chargers in Weeks 8 and 14, respectively. I really think it might come down to Week 13 matchup with the Dolphins, uh, which is going to be important as they're a very winnable game there uh, against the Dolphins. And it could a win there could give them extra cushion on the over there. So most of our simulations really have the Giants going 9-7 and seven this season. But we really think the Giants are putting the right pieces together this offseason. And another year under Daniel Jones' belt uh, with Saquon returning and Joe Judge's second year in the league, this team is going to be a lot better than people think. We actually like them to hit the over here kind of easily. Uh, their over, like we mentioned, was at 7. And uh, I think they have a chance at winning this division or at least competing with Dallas late in the season. Giants fans, let us know. What do you think your team's doing this season? Put it in the comments below. We have high hopes for Daniel Jones and company. What great wide receiver pickups with Ross and Galladay from the Lions and the Rams. Uh, or I'm sorry, the Lions and the Bengals there. But you guys got a great core offense with a defense that's only going to get better. Let us know what you think the Giants are going to do. For us here at Grand Sam Betters, that does it for our giant season preview. Stay tuned tomorrow as we continue to dive into the NFC East. And as always, sit back, relax, enjoy our season previews, enjoy the NFL season, and we'll see you tomorrow.